Hey guys, Kyle from ThisIsTrouble.com here, coming at you with a tutorial today about how to format your ebook. So this is something that I've never really done before myself. I've pretty much always hired someone to do it, but I decided with this most recent project that it would be beneficial for me to learn how to do this. Um, this entire process of this book that I have written now and it's live, it's called Understanding Ukraine. It's basically a, a self-publishing case study where I can track how long it took me to do all of this and then also go into, you know, what are applicable steps so that you guys can take these same formula and make a little bit of money online. And so that is my goal is to break all of this down. And I recognize that, you know, if you're just starting out, you know, I can afford to pay someone to format my book on Fiverr or something. Um, but if you're just starting out, that $50 investment may seem like a lot to really have a good quality job done. It also depends obviously on how long your book is, but in any case, I decided it would be good for me to buckle down and really try to figure out how to do this. I would say start to finish. Um, I was doing editing and multitasking on a lot of things. If I truly just buckled down on it, I probably could have done this in a couple of hours. Um, but in today's world, yeah, I was working on all sorts of things at the same time. But in any case, um, and just to show you how to how exactly how much I can't talk today how much formatting I did it really was all blog posts so you guys are probably familiar with my niche site ukraineliving.com this book is all the blog posts from that site almost all compiled into a book and so it really did take a lot of formatting to get this to look good and as a result now I can show you guys so here's the first page this is not the cover page and here's the cover actually I'll show you so this is the cover if you look at it from the Kindle previewer let's go back so here's what you know cover looks like I'm writing this under my bachelor travels name and here's what the table of contents looks like and as you go forward you can see Here's what the general text formatting looks like. So let's see now what that looks like in pages. For those of you that are using Microsoft Word, I feel sorry for you. I don't use Word. Um, it's it's a little different, but pages makes it really easy, especially when you just use um, their ebook format. And they have it right in here. Where is it? Business cards. I don't know. Where is it? Miscellaneous. There we go. Yeah. So use this digital book format, it makes it a little bit easier, and they give you a really nice template. Apple has actually done a very good job with pages. So as you can see, you know, here's the copyright page. As you scroll down, here is the index. So here's how this is formatted. If you click this, it'll bring up this entire guide. And now you have to remember that here, so here's what your chapter name is. And you can change these font styles if you don't like the font style. Um, with ebooks, you want to keep something simple, like Georgia in, in most cases. And so as you can see, here's all of the options that you can enable for your table of contents. So as you can see, I have chapter name and the heading. That's all I have, the way that, that this book is formatted. Um, I don't know why chapter subtitles still check. There's none of those in there. And so you can change all your settings in there and determine really how much information you want to give to people. Now if you scroll down, there's this white space here. And that's the only white space on this book, really. So here's the biggest rule about ebooks: is they do not function like normal books. You have to get this through your head. If you don't do it, you're going to be up for a lot of pain. And the reason for this is because when you have an EPUB or a Kindle format or Mobi, it looks different on every device. You know, for example, I have one of the, what is it, a 9-inch iPad, I think, 8.7. Someone who has a 7-inch iPad is going to see this, the, the book differently than I am. And then if you shrink it down even more to a Kindle format, you know, those screens are not more than a few inches wide. It's going to, again, look different. Plus, you've got different resolutions. You've got landscape view versus vertical view. So the biggest rule of thumb is to remember that it does not apply you know your page breaks don't apply it does not look the same therefore you have to look at it from a digital sense of making it make sense to most devices and so if you go down here you'll see there's absolutely no breaks you know in most cases it would make sense that you would format it like this and you'd have a little white space right that's not the case you have to have it all shrunk up and crunched like this 
And when you do this, when you then upload it to Amazon, it will look good. As you can see, this is exactly really how it should look on a Kindle. And then if you go here, let's go to a tablet version. As you can see, it looks the same. You know, it formats it correctly. And hell, look, look how many options you have here. There's just so many different ways of viewing an ebook that it's almost necessary for you to follow. I mean, yeah, you have to follow these rules. There are no pages, the same rules do not apply. So as you scroll through, you can see these are what the headings all are. This is kind of a bit of a travel guide, so I really wanted to find make it easily accessible so people could reference stuff quickly. Images, same thing. You've got to just follow the rules. All your images should be set to inline with text. They should fall in. You should not try to wrap it around. You should not try to put it horizontal in a grid format. You should just do what works and put it in line with the text. As you can see, it comes out very good when you do it right. All right. Continuing forward, that's pretty much the meat of what I wanted to say. You guys can see, obviously, that everything comes through. So yes, the only white spaces I have are for the chapter breaks, and those come out okay. As you can see, though, I mean, there are pictures in this book. It is pretty descriptive, um, and that's it, really. The biggest rule of thumb, do not think it is like a normal book. And so I'll just give you guys a bit of an example here. So probably the most image heavy is this one. So as you can see, they all come out pretty nicely, actually. You know, depending on what device, these bits at the end might come out a little different, but it's, it's absolutely readable. You know, people aren't going to complain about the formatting of this book. All right, so in summary, Understanding Ukraine, like I said, I'll publish all this information on a blog post as well as releasing this video. The general rules of thumb are that you want to use this table of contents, set it up how you'd like to show the information. You know, you want to make it accessible so people can find it. It's, it's not a normal book where you can bookmark a page. I mean, well, you can bookmark a page in some apps, but for the most part, you want pe people to be able to get to certain parts of your book right from the beginning. And from there, you have to just forget everything you know about formatting and remember that you really shouldn't have any white spaces. If you do this, your ebook should come out pretty good. And then obviously, once you upload to Amazon, it, you want to preview it and check it and make sure everything comes out OK. But that's it for this tutorial on how to format your own ebook. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something from it. And look for more content coming up soon regarding this.